All right, welcome back. Just breezing through the hour here. Uh, Dow uh, having a good day. The afternoon's going well for it. Up uh, buck, almost 200 now at 25.7. And uh, Bitcoin getting slaughtered down 700 bucks. But uh, the guy um, who knows more than anybody about uh, being a public interest attorney and standing up for the rights of regular people, professor at George Washington University, John Banziff, joins us right now along with Frankie. John, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us again. You were right on the money on here on Liquid Lunch. You said at first that they should take uh, CPAP machines and use them as respirators, and then all of a sudden they started talking about that as, as one thing that hospitals were going to do that were un unmanned. It turns out that we didn't actually need all the respirators that we were supposedly going to need, um, but we need help right now. These riots are getting out of control, and you say there's a remedy for that. I think there's a remedy. I understand your studio was damaged, and that puts you in a unique position to strike a blow for all the victims of all the riots, because nobody else is doing very much. I mean, the National Guard, massive police presence, uh, curfews, threats, and so on are not stopping these rioters. Washington, D.C. has more different police uh, forces than you can shake a stick at. We're under the ultimate control in D.C., of a very law and order president, and yet more than 60 different law enforcement officers were injured in the riots. The president had to be rushed to a secret box. I mean, that's like these third world countries where it's mob rule and, and that's the way it works. So, but you can bring a civil suit. Let me tell you quickly how it works. If you it. can identify even a few of the rioters, you don't have to figure out which ones damaged your studio, but those who were involved in the riot in your area, you can then sue all of the people who were identified. You only have to prove beyond a, by a preponderance of evidence that they did the damage. You don't have to identify which particular uh, rock thrower or stick wielder did the damage. All the people involved in the riot can be sued collectively. You can sue on behalf not just of yourself, but all of the others in the area who also suffered damages. You don't have to figure out, you don't have to prove which kid actually did it, and you can get a judgment, a verdict, a judgment, we, we call it a, a judgment, against each and every one of the rioters for the entire amount. So if your studio is worth, or suffered, say, $100,000 worth of damages, and there were 10 guys who did it, you don't get a judgment of $10,000 against Smith and Jones and Ed and so on and so forth. You get a $100,000 judgment against each and every one of them. If they have any property, you can go after it. If they have jobs, you can garnish their wages. If they don't currently have jobs or anything else, you put a lien on them, and that hangs on until it's paid off. That just might discourage people because they don't fear arrests. They don't fear these small fines. Here in the District of Columbia, our prosecutor is not prosecuting most of the people hauled in for rioting. So you can do it. Just find a sympathetic lawyer or sympathetic public interest organization. And if we can use the words on the air, sue the bastards. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Professor, and this would apply, obviously, not just to John, but to anybody that's been, um, you know, the victim of property damage or looting or anything throughout the course of this riot. Is that accurate? It would apply to anybody who suffered any kind of recognizable damages. And, and it works. My, one of my favorite cases is a kid who didn't like some pipeline and he decided he'd chain himself to, the, to some of the construction equipment. And he explained to CNN that, I'm sorry, uh, uh, one of the radios, that he was perfectly happy to pay the small fine. And he got sued civilly for $39,000, and that really knocked him back. I can now, imagine. Now, chaining yourself to a piece of uh, construction equipment is far less serious, of course, than breaking windows, setting things afire, and assaulting people. There was actually a reporter within a block from the White House, a Fox News reporter, who was physically assaulted last night. So, yeah, anybody who's injured can bring the lawsuit, class action on behalf of all of the others. You can go after anybody identified in the riot. You don't have to prove who did what to whom, just that they were involved in what we lawyers call a joint tortfeasor enterprise, a conspiracy. And then you can get a judgment, a verdict against all of them, each and every one of them, for the entire amount. 
And that ought to have more discouraging effect than the threat of a $25 fine. Oh, so, boy, I would say so. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, let me ask you this. Do you have, um, I know you're an esteemed professor at George Washington and everything. Do you have a directory of uh, sympathetic lawyers? You said I got to find a sympathetic lawyer. Where do, where do we look for those? No, I don't have lists of sympathetic lawyers. <laughs> what I can suggest is going through using Google, Google News, for example, or other search engines, find newspaper articles about people who uh, are law and order, uh, uh, attorneys or public interest organizations, which seem to be law and order, who have spoken out against rioting and so on, uh, and contact them. And if they can't help you, they probably have a list because they're in New York and they work with them. So that'd be a good start. You might even want to try some of the local law schools. They have law school clinics, which will be coming back online or in operation in, a, in about a month or so in late August, September. And uh, if some of them are interested in law and order and social justice, uh, they might be willing to help you. After all, you are a totally innocent victim. It might be one thing. I say might. I don't agree, but it might be one thing if protesters, rioters think the government done them wrong to go after the government. The cops are mistreating you and so on. Okay, maybe, maybe you can justify burning a police car. I don't think you had anything to do with the death of this black guy. I don't think you had anything personally to do with any of the wrong police wrongdoings in New York City. So you, like so many others, are a completely, totally, absolutely innocent victim, and there is no legal or moral right to go after totally, absolutely innocent victims because you have a cause, whether or not it's a good cause or a bad cause, or I agree with the cause, or you agree with the cause, or it's popular or unpopular. So um, how long, I was talking to some attorneys about it yesterday who I thought might be sympathetic. Um, turns out they weren't. But um, they were also saying that, uh, you know, the federal court system just started up again. The state court system here in New York has a huge backlog. So it could take years for a case like this to work its way through the courts. It would indeed. But let's be very realistic. The minute you or your lawyer files a complaint and that complaint is served on the defendant, the process starts. He's got to go out and hire a lawyer for, I don't know what they charge in New York, $800 an hour, $1,000 an hour to defend them. There's a whole lot of what we call pre-trial discovery. You get to discover by him. He gets to discover against you. This can go on for quite a while. Most people can't afford to run up a big lawsuit tab. My guess is that they would probably be willing to settle. And uh, you're in the driver's seat because... Unlike with criminal proceedings, where you have to depend upon the prosecutor, you have to depend on the, uh, uh, the police and so on and so forth, when you bring a civil suit, your lawyer is the guy basically running the show. So you can begin to the process right away whether or not you get your judgment. And I think it'll be more likely a settlement than a judgment. But even so, this will hang over people's heads for years and years. Mm. Ultimately, if you've got good evidence, you can win. In the meantime, let's hope your insurance covers it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. In the meantime, um, we got a whole boatload of business owners here in New York who've been locked out of their stores for the last two months. And then to add insult to injury, poor leadership on behalf of the mayor um, and the governor, if you ask me, causes these people to get their windows bashed in on top of it. So they're not making money. And now all of a sudden these riots exacerbate the problem for all these small businesses. They got to go spend money now um, because even insurance companies are taking a beating right now. People don't have to pay their insurance in New York. So it's crazy cascade effect out there. And, you know, when it comes to Antifa, I guess, you know, that's the organization everyone would want to go for. But it seems like we had some great experts today. No one can identify where the nucleus of the Antifa leadership is. Well, the, the whole point is you don't have to go after a particular organization or a leadership. And the situation you described is exactly why I think trying, trying, and it's worked in a number of situations, but at least trying using civil suits because the police are not doing it. The National Guard isn't doing it. You can cast some blame on your mayor, your governor, whatever else. It's hard to sue the government 
They've got big bucks. They've got deep pockets. But my guess is you go after some of those individual defendants, they can't afford to spend 800 bucks an hour defending themselves from you when you've got a good case. And remember, you only have to identify those who were involved in the immediate area. Maybe the, the, the window next door to yours. Maybe there's a camera down the road or Mom. Some of these guys are actually stupid enough. They post their ventures right. up on the internet. So look for them. I'm going to do some research. This guy's always doing research. Uh, best of the best of them. John Banzaf, thank you very much. Thank you for thank being you. there. But don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this.